Hey everybody, Angry Poncho here, and my next random flash game is Red Remover. This is a fun little game. I'll put a link in the description of where you can play it. You actually really you can just Google it and go almost anywhere to play this game. There's like eight different sites that are hosting it right now, just on the front page of Google. But basically, the object of the game, which is what the tutorials we're going through right now are teaching us, is that we need to remove all the red blocks without removing the green blocks. And often in later levels. The more difficult aspect is not removing green ones, because it's often uh, easy to get rid of all the red ones, but difficult to do it without removing the green blocks. So you can see basic physics apply, things fall downwards, if things are sloped they slide, there's a little bit of friction involved so that things don't slide indefinitely. Uh, there are some problems with the rotational friction not slowing things down. Like if a ball starts rolling, it'll keep rolling until it hits something, it won't be slowed down by its rolling momentum or it's rolling friction. But you see, on slopes like this, the ball is going to accelerate until it gets to a flat surface and it'll go the same speed forever and ever. Yeah! But the first <coughs> levels are basically really easy. Right here, right now, we're not going through for any particular uh, skill or speed. Just sort of zipping through the levels. This is all edited, of course. I'm sure you can tell that. Basically. I mean, I have to post-commentate these uh, random flash games right now just because... Okay, we're being communicated out in Morse code. Nice. Anyway, oh, this is neat. That's <laughs> the way that looks. Let's do that again. Whoop, whoop. Awesome. Yay! Gosh, you get so sick of hearing those kids yelling at you. It's crazy. But we're not going for any particular skill or s or speed or number of clicks. Later on, we're going to have to come back and do these in like a certain number of clicks. And then, uh, like, we're having to do it with the lights off and th some other things. So there's never, like, a time requirement, thank goodness. It's only about the number of clicks. But uh, these levels are pretty easy. You can see that the concepts for most of them are just like, hey, let's play with gravity for a bit, and then, you know, random junk happens. But uh, you can see they're, they're pretty straightforward up, up, up through the first, like, 30 or so. There's really not a whole lot complicated going on. And I think we're we're gonna breeze through like all these levels in the first video. This will be a three-part, three-video game. Uh, oh, a video game, nice. No, but uh, that's a three-parter. That's a pretty pretty good for a flash game. You see, what you're seeing here is an edited pile of my successes, because uh, believe me, it took me like I think a hundred minutes. Uh, I think I, I think I ended up coming up with like a hundred minutes of film for this game, and it's been cut down to like 26 or 27 minutes. So that should let you know that about what you should be looking at. You should be looking at failure about three-fourths of the time and then the success for the rest of the time. Yeah. And that's just about on average. And so there are some levels that you'll get on the first try and you'll get them with the right number of clicks and everything without even trying. Like this one, there's really no way to do it with more than two clicks. I think if you clicked on anything else, you'd fail. <laughs> and uh, this one is sort of just luck depending on like where the per pink block goes and etc. Cetera, et cetera. But really there's only one way to do a lot of the levels. Ooh, 20 levels, nice. We now can change the faces. Which I, I like the big eyed faces better, so I'm going to leave it like that. This is a neat puzzle here. You got to use the uh, little bit of stuff going on. It's kind of neat the way things like slide around and they. they I, I, whoever came up with the, all these puzzles uh, must have had a bunch of good ideas because some of them are just like, wow. Who, who thought of that? Yeah, and that one you want to go in steps. Don't try to just like get rid of everything at once. You've got to get everything in the right order so that you don't uh, end up sending them all over the place. What's this one called? Pinch? Oh, this is an easy one. It's two-clicker. I actually did that one three clicks there. It's not, not necessary to click on that second block I hit. But as you can see here, this game is fairly easy, fairly straightforward. I just I enjoyed the physics engine in this game. And the w like making things like pinch each other and like the way that gravity can go four different directions. I just thought that that was kind of neat. Now here you only need to get rid of two of them. But I think that I actually got rid of three on both sides because it totally misses them when you get rid of three. If you only get rid of two of those blocks, it'll kind of like bump them, and they may or may not fall over. It might take a couple tries. But I think the minimum number of clicks there is four, so you can actually go try to do it in just four clicks. We can't actually view what, what the par is for each level. That's what it's called. It's the right number of clicks is the par. And if you're above that, you're, you're clicking unnecessarily. But, uh... We can't actually see that until we beat 30 levels, I think. This one was tricky. I didn't know what to do here at first, and then I was just like, oh, 
it just so happens that if you click on that one and then that one it happens to like balance when it falls down there interesting oh this one is this one's fun I like the concept of dominoes that's, that's just so neat I don't know if you guys ever played with dominoes as a kid but if you didn't you totally missed out because those things were awesome I don't mean like playing dominoes like actually playing the game I mean like standing them up in like long lines and then knocking them all over at once in like a huge chain reaction of like clacking sounds that was awesome uh, now we start to get to these puzzles where we've got circular green ones. Those are those can get to be a pain. There's a couple later on where there's circular green blocks, and we just there's not a whole lot you can do to uh, keep them where they are, besides like pin them between two other blocks. This one I don't even I don't know how that one got to be level 30 because that one was really easy. All right, well done. And now we can see the par. The ones that are yellow have been done on par, and the ones that are green have been done above par. So you know. I would say subpar, that, but that sort of gives the wrong impression. Because subpar, by subpar I mean not as good as it could have been. But sub sort of implies under, and under par would be a good thing. Because, I don't know if you guys play golf, but the <laughs> Yeah, he got stuck in there. The green was supposed to fall out at that point. So I was kind of like, oh, what do I do? Okay, that works. <laughs> but yeah, if you, I don't know if you guys play golf or not, or if you even know much about it. But the par for any given hole in golf is the... Uh, like the recommended number of shots that like hey you you can probably do this hole in this many shots and if you go over that it's like uh you're not particularly good but if you go under it's it's sort of like wow you must have like gotten a really good drive or managed to put it in in one shot instead of two or whatever i used to play golf with my uh, dad when i was younger i uh, i think i quit playing at the point when i grew out of my clubs <laughs> and just like never really got back into it uh it's a sport where you you time spend a lot of time walking and then you hit the ball and like pray that it's going to go in the right direction and then you walk again and that's basically the entire process is like walking for a bit and then hitting the ball praying and then walking some more and it's often like associated with like or often results in like you like hitting the ball praying and then like screaming in anger and then walking towards the ball in frustration hitting it angrily hitting an even worse shot <laughs> and then just like <laughs> throwing your club like I think, that, I think it, isn't it Tiger Woods who throws his club I think it is. I don't know. I can't really get confirmation on that right now. Oh, <laughs> that's right. His wife threw his clubs. Yeah. <laughs> oh gosh. That's 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 been going on in, in the news recently. That he, I guess it was like a month ago that that first happened, and now he's coming back out of like sex rehab or something, some sh BS like that. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh oh, what's going on here? My, uh, what is my computer doing? This is strange. Like, my frame rate has dropped, like, drastically. Like, I'm getting, like, 1 50th of the frames I should be seeing. Like, I'm still back on that last level. <laughs> so, like, okay. Not really sure what's happening there. I think my computer must be doing something in the background that isn't telling me about, which I don't like. I despise when computers do things without asking you first. And particularly when they're, what they're, what it is that they're doing it would, uh, slow down whenever you're trying to run. So I really hope that whatever I'm we're commentating right now stays in sync. Of course, it's not like you'd be able to tell if it was out of sync or not. I'm not actually talking about what's going on on the screen, am I? Ah, it's different ways to commentate things. I notice uh, some of Nintendo Capri Sun's LPs, he'll go through like an entire video and not actually talk about what he's doing. <laughs> he'll just like, talk about something interesting that happened in his life recently, and it's like, oh. And it's interesting, you know? You don't mind watching it. You don't get a damn thing about the game, but it's still interesting. Yeah, I almost screwed that one up there. You gotta alternate from one side to the next so that they don't push each other off. You keep them in parallel, and then you sort of go around and get rid of these, and you go around and get rid of the other ones, and they, all the green blocks end up in the middle. And actually just like click on every single red block. Yay! We beat all the levels! And now we gotta go back through and get them on par. Actually, yeah, we don't want bonus mode. We wanna get them on par instead. So we gotta do this in one click. Okay. That was easy. <laughs> I mean, that should do it, right? And I can't really read what I'm doing here, so it's going so fast. But you guys are welcome to like pause the video. I think it says part two for this level. Yeah, that's easy. You just gotta click there and then click there, and they push each other off. I had clicked unnecessarily when I did it the first time. What we got here, part two. Yeah, you should wait. Basically, it's all about patience, because you're gonna have to click to get rid of that top bar, and then what'll happen is often they'll get pinned, and you can click on one of the other blue ones, and it'll just pop them away. Whee! Yeah. Yep. 
bar 2 here. Yeah, just click there, and then click there. Again, I, I got a little click happy the first time through, so you don't actually... It's not actually very hard to get those on par. Par 3 here. 1, 2, and then boom, and you have to hope that the pink block tumbles off up there. See what it, see it go? Because if you have to click on that one, you got too many clicks. So you have to just get try to get lucky and have it tumble away. This one was tricky because you have to actually keep that one blue one in the top there. And it can be a little tricky to get the timing right. That one took a couple tries. But as you can see, once you get it, it sort of just teeters for a bit. And I'm getting a little patient wiggling the mouse around. And uh, it eventually will stop. I mean, it'll either stop or, or fall over. But it won't, keep t it won't t teeter forever. It'll either accept or reject. It won't, won't ever spin on any given input. Yay! It's a little bit of discrete uh, math coming out. I guess that was more of a theory of computation than anything else, though. Anyway, we're done for this episode, so I'll see you guys next time when we'll continue with Red Remover.